Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're making a garbage truck toy. Well, quite some time ago, I had a viewer contact me and request a garbage truck toy. And I thought it was a fun toy to make. And I also took the opportunity to show you guys kind of a bit of my thought process when going through and making patterns. And as barbaric as my process is, it still works for me. And I still come up with patterns for toys and other things. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to step into this pattern. We're going to make it for the first time here on the show. Possibly have to make some corrections. I don't know. We'll see its faults, its flaws, what works, what doesn't. But it all starts off with the pattern. So let's head over to the bench. Well, here we have our pattern and there are multiple, multiple pieces here on this pattern to make. Now, guys, I think what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to start off with the cab. So there's several pieces of the cab to make. We have the cab back, the cab roof, the cab driver's side, the cab passenger side, as well as the front grill. And believe it or not, this is a major majority of the project. So these pieces all are made from quarter inch thick material. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to place these patterns. I'm going to adhere them onto some quarter inch thick stock. And one by one, we're going to cut them over at the scroll saw, being as careful as we can to cut them accurately. Now, guys, if you don't want to do that, that's not a problem. You can use a fret saw or whatever else works for you. As for the cab roof, quarter inch thick by three and a quarter by three and a half. This is a table saw cut, guys. Um, you can even, if you want, do the same thing over here and then just scale off the drawing and mark out the back window and cut that with a scroll saw. So either way, let me get these five pieces made and uh, we can go from there. Well, I decided that for the sake of assembly um, and keeping square edges, et cetera, and having everything mate properly, it was better for me anyway to cut the pieces at the table saw so that I know that everything is gonna fit together properly. So guys, what I'm going to do at this point in time now is I'm still going to adhere these patterns um, to a stock, but what I'm going to adhere them to is quarter inch MDF and I will cut them out and make templates and mark out the pieces that I need to mark and cut them accordingly. Well, those three pieces are pretty straightforward. Um, with the templates, it worked out really well for tracing them. You just have to remember that for the cab sides, you need a left and a right or a driver's side and a passenger side. So we'll put those aside here and we now want to do the front grill. Now I've cut it to size at the table saw and for this, I'm just going to scale off the drawing. This is not imperative measurements. It's just decorative for the headlights. So I'm going to scale off the drawing and then drill these five di or five eighths diameter Forstner bit holes, one eighth of an inch deep in this piece of poplar for the front grill. Well, with the two side panels, the back panel, the front grill and the roof made, we can actually glue this together now. Um, it's a little weird the way it goes together. So let me show you how that's going to work. Well, before you start the assembly, you want to make sure that you give all your pieces a good sanding. Now, I have an assembly board here. You've seen me use these on model builds before. And all we're going to do for starters is we're going to take our roof piece. I have a straight edge clamped in the back here and I have a square clamped here on the side. And that is to give us a square reference point. And what we want to do is we want to take the roof and sit it upright like this. And we're going to glue the back window in place just like that. And we're going to let that dry. All right, so with this assembly dry, we can now take our driver's side panel 
and we'll apply some glue to the side of our roof and our back window. And we can glue these in place just like this. And the last thing that we want to do is we want to glue in place the other side and as well the front grill. And that will just get glued here just like this. And once you get this all in place, you can just clamp it up and set it aside and let that completely dry. Once it's dry, we have just a little bit of shaping to do over at the belt sander. Well, with the cab dried, we can now shape the roof at the front and the back. And we can see here on the drawing, we have these curves that are already cut on the passenger and driver's side. We just need to duplicate those curves and we can easily do that over at the belt sander. And once you get those shaped on the front and the back of the roof panels, you can go around and sand all of your edges, breaking all the sharp edges there for the little fingers. And this is what you end up with. And this is pretty much our cab of our garbage truck finished. So guys, you can add as much or as little detail to this as you want. If you want to put, say some, oh, I don't know, maybe some seats in here or a steering wheel, you can put whatever you like. Um, but I'm keeping this as simple as I can for now. So there we go. That is the cab done. With that finished now, we can move on to the chassis of the vehicle. Well, the chassis is one of the simplest pieces in this entire build. We see here on the plans that it's half inch thick and three inches wide, nine and a quarter inches long. And I have just cut a piece of pine in this case to the dimensions on the plans. I've then scaled off the drawings. We've got three holes here on each side. So I've scaled off the drawing and I've marked them here on the edges of our chassis. I'm just gonna give myself a little center punch at each one. And then we're gonna take it over to the drill press and I'm going to drill a quarter inch diameter hole one inch deep at each one of those marks. Well, that is the chassis and the cab done. And I, you know what? I have to be honest here and say I'm a little confused. Normally, when I make these plans, uh, I make the plans and within a few days, I make the toy and test it. This plan was actually made back in July and we're at the end of September here. So I've kind of forgotten some of the things that I've done here and I'm trying to wrap my head around it and I'm seeing some discrepancies in the measurements. So what we're going to do this, we're going to make this uh, rear container now. Now, my initial thought on this is that it was going to be made um, kind of like a bandsaw box and we're still going to follow through with that. But where I'm seeing some discrepancies is here in this back section uh, of the outer drum and uh, or the rear drum. And I'm seeing three inches wide here as well as two side discs that are a quarter inch thick. Well, that totals three and a half inches of thickness, but on the actual rear container, the interior dimension is only three inches. So I think I'm going to have to make some adjustments here somewhere along the line. So either way, what we need to do is I need to laminate some pieces for this bandsaw box rear container. So I'm going to scale off the drawing and uh, we are going to laminate together some three quarter inch thick pine to give us one large block of pine in order to cut this. And once that all dries, we're going to head over to the bandsaw. Well, our block is dry and I still need to level out or flatten one edge here with all of the squeeze out. Uh, we're just going to do that over at the bandsaw. It doesn't have to be perfect. But what I want to do is the more I look at this pattern, the more I'm not happy with what's going on here. If we go over to the rear piece, which is this section right here, our outer drum, we have a three inch wide section here. And then we have quarter inch thick 
end caps that would be mounted onto here. And that is going to keep the whole drum intact and have it sit in the rear of the toy and have it spin. So we have three and a quarter, and then another one is three and a half inches wide, but I only have a three inch wide space here because of these three eighth inch sections. And I think this is wrong. I think what I meant to put here was one eighth, one eighth on this side and one eighth on this side. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and just like we would with a bandsaw box, I am going to uh, cut off one eighth of an inch off of each side of our laminated block. Well, with those one eighth inch strips cut off, we now need to cut our core. And our core is this center line here, the one in the middle. But I realized afterwards that I didn't leave something for an opening of the back of the truck. So in the core, we need to come in on an angle here. We're gonna curve out. It doesn't have to be perfect because it's all garbage after this. And we're going to um, cut along this line as well. And that will provide an opening at the back of the truck. I've cut the pattern here at the front and the bottom straight lines, and we're going to glue it directly onto our core piece um, using spray adhesive and lining up our edges so that we have something to gauge by when we cut the exterior cut. So let's change up the blade in our bandsaw. We're going to put in a 3 16 inch blade and we're going to cut this core of our dump truck rear compartment. Okay, and at this point we can remove our core. Now you may have noticed I didn't go right into the corners here. Guys, this is way back inside the truck. You'll never see it. So don't try to go through the trouble of making those sharp corners. Get a nice sweeping curb with your bandsaw and get the whole thing cut out. So we're going to remove this pattern. And what we want to do now is I want to glue our outer 1 8 inch slices back onto our main block. And once we get that glued in place, we're going to let it set up completely before we do anything else with it. All right, and with that assembly dry now, we're going to attach the pattern again, lining it up just like we did before um, so that our cuts will match. And we're gonna take this over to the bandsaw and we're going to cut the second series of cuts here, which is the exterior line and as well this wheel well. And that will get us the shape of the rear container of our garbage truck. And when you get that cut, this ends up to be the back of your garbage truck toy. Now, a little bit of a mess up here with the cutting. That's okay. I can sand that out. Guys, this is a tough cut for a 3 16 inch blade on the bandsaw. There's two things that cause that. Number one, the small blade and the thickness of the material. But number two is the fact that it's pine. And while you'll think that pine is a soft wood, so easy to cut, that may be true, but the sawdust of pine, it compresses and it gets caught up in the kerf and can very easily burn. You can see some of the burning here. So you really have to take your time and do a very slow cut in order to give the gullets of the bandsaw blade the time to clear that kind of um, squishy, compacting pine dust. But either way, what we're going to do here now is right here where we have our marks on the side of our truck, we're going to drill a quarter inch through hole right through into both panels. And then we can remove the pattern here and give this a good sanding. Okay, and there is the back end of our garbage truck. Now, our wheel wells here this is an empty space and we need to fill that space so hopefully you kept this which is the cutout from this section here and what we're going to do is i'm going to cut it right along here um, on the bottom edge 
on both sides, probably about a quarter of an inch in. And that is actually going to be the inner wheel well cover in here. I'm going to show you that in just a minute. So let me get this cut and then we can start putting together the back end anyway of our garbage truck. Well, I honestly don't think I've ever really had a toy model that has had this many problems. Um, normally they work out pretty well with a couple little minor tweaks, but I'm trying to assemble this. And as I'm looking at this, I've cut some uh, two inch discs out of scrap plywood just to help me with the alignment of the cab. And guys, I'm looking at this and I don't know what I was thinking, but why is this chassis so short? There is nothing to support the front end of this cab. And when I put this on the back end, there is nothing to support the back end either. And I'm a little disenchanted with that. But what we're going to do, I'm, I'm going to make a bit of um, an on the fly repair that can keep the pattern the same. So all I've done is I've cut a three by three block of wood here. In this case, it's three quarter inch thick pine. And I'm just going to mount it like this to the front end of our frame. And then from there, our cab can glue right down over top. It can glue at the back and as well to the front end of this piece of pine. And that will support everything along. If you want, you can shoot a couple of pin nails in the front to hold the chassis in place as well and give it a little bit of extra structure. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that mounted and then we can carry on with mounting the back. Well, I've got the cab in place and I now want to put my rear section in place, the rear container. So we're just going to line it up side to side. And we're also going to line it up so that there is even spacing on the wheels in the wheel well. And once I'm happy with that, I'm going to shoot a couple of pin nails down here in the bottom in the thicker part where we curve the blade around that inside. And uh, we're going to clamp this up and let it completely dry. Well, everything is glued together. And I mean, so far, even with the problems, it looks okay. But we've still got this hole in here in our wheel wells. And I know that I said I was going to glue in these sections but it really doesn't work the way that I would like it to. And the reason I haven't glued these in is because I think it's going to interfere with this piece here, which is the actual chute for the back of the truck. So out of our off cut here, I have drawn our circle on here. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw and I'm going to cut this circle out. And there is our circle cut, but I want to measure now the height of this opening in the back of the truck. And in this case, we are at two and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to mark it out here on our blank at two and a quarter. And what I want to do is I want to cut this straight across on the bandsaw at two and a quarter inches. And the reason for that is so that I can fit it into this or remove it if I have to. Just like that. And now I've also drilled our quarter inch diameter hole right in the middle of our pattern. So over at the bandsaw, I'm going to take a quarter inch slab off of each side. And once I get those sliced off, I'm then going to cut out the center profile as by the pattern, which is this section right here. And at that point, we can glue this whole assembly back together. All right, so we'll just move the truck aside. And what you should have now is three pieces like this. So we're going to glue this back together and then I'll show you what to do next. So this section is finished and I've given it a good sanding and all we need to do, I have an extra long axle pin. We're just going to slide our chute in here. We'll line up the axle pin here with the holes that we've drilled in both the chute and in the side of our truck. And there we go. There is our garbage chute. So our garbage will go into this chute and then it can be dumped into the back 
and spun around and then refilled. Now, the problem here is that we have this big gap as well. I have this big gap here. So if you dump the garbage, it would appear that it all wants to come out here. So I'm going to have to put something here to close this gap. And as well, we're going to put something to close this wheel well gap. So what I'm thinking is I still may use these pieces, but I may trim them so that they will allow um, our chute to spin here. Because the way this is right now, if I put these in, the chute isn't going to spin. This is one of the problems with designing a toy when it's in your mind is that it looks great on paper and then you come out here to the shop and we end up with problems. And that is why we test them here on the show first. So what I ended up with is two pieces that look like this. So we've glued them into the toy and you can see how they seal off this container section, uh, but leave enough room there for the drum to turn. So what I'm hoping here is that the drum will always be covering this part so we don't have our garbage spilling out of the truck. I've also had to in the bottom, I don't know if you can see that right here, I can show you at the bottom. I've had to glue in a scrap of walnut. I didn't clean out the squeeze out or clean up the squeeze out there. Let's do that. But I've had to glue in just a little scrap of walnut onto the floor of the container in order to close up that hole. So now with everything glued in, we can put our um, chute back in place. And I can show you here on the side how the gap there is, is filled. So there you go. There is the stage that we're at at this point in time. And there you have it. A garbage truck toy. Guys, I know what you're thinking. Kenny, you forgot about the wheels. Absolutely not. I have not forgotten about the wheels. And as you can see, the toy has wheels. The problem is, is that there was so many problems and so many fixes and twists and turns in this build that were unexpected that there's just not enough time in one show to add the wheels. Now, if you remember there a little while ago, we made that ambulance toy and we really weren't happy with the wheels that we had there. So I thought, with this show being extended and with the ambulance toy sort of uh, having some issues with the really boring wheels, I thought that it would be a great opportunity for us to step in and on next week's show bring you a full tutorial on how to make a little more interesting wheels for toys. So that's what we're going to do and that will be the wheels that are on this truck. Now, guys, this has been quite possibly the biggest disaster of a toy design that I have ever done. Um, I've never had this many problems. I have never had this many issues or this many conflicts where say that internal drum suddenly was hitting this or hitting that, or I didn't uh, have the internal wheel well thought out. Now I did design this one when I was on vacation, but that shouldn't make a difference. It was in the evenings during downtime. So it, and being in vacation mode shouldn't have affected the way I think when it comes to designing a toy, but there have been problems. Now I will adjust the pattern somewhat. I'm going to adjust where measurements are wrong and that sort of thing, but I am not going to put in a lot of these modifications simply due to the fact that I'd have to do, redo the entire drawing. I really would. And quite honestly, I don't even know how to portray what it is that I've done here today because some of it was on the fly. So hopefully you guys will be able to download the pattern from my website, a cut above woodworkings.com. And you can follow along with this show and make modifications, see what I did. And, you know, maybe you can come up with your own ideas, whatever you like. But either way, guys, it's a great toy. It's one of the biggest ones I've designed, um, which makes it so that there is next to zero choking hazards as far as small parts go. Even the wheels being two inch in diameter, 
it's not a choking hazard according to the standards of toy making so we got that going for us but we got one heck of a lot of issues with this toy <laughs> guys i want to thank you so much for tuning in this week i hope you've enjoyed this uh this cluster i don't even know what to say if you haven't already please i don't know why you would at this point but please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. We have an amazing audience base, and I'm hoping that you're going to consider becoming a part of that. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to give this one a whirl and come up with your own modifications to make it work for you. I hope that you've enjoyed the content today. I hope that if you're the one that um, suggested or requested this garbage truck toy, I hope you're happy. <laughs> And more importantly, guys, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video.